Hello. This is the last video in the set about arc length and curvature. I thought the last video was it, but uh, I didn't want to make it too long. I'm trying to keep these 10 minutes or below, hopefully. So here's the last video. Um, we've talked about curvature, measuring the bend, the degree of bend of a vector function. We've talked about arc length, measuring the distance traveled along the curve. This last part of this section looks at vectors that are related to the unit tangent vector. The unit tangent vector, we use the, the variable, um, we use the capital T for it, bolded. Uh, officially, the name is the principal unit tangent vector. Uh, the fact that it's unit means its magnitude is 1. And we also showed in the process of figuring out the formula for curvature based off velocity and acceleration, we showed that the unit tangent vector was actually orthogonal to its derivative. The issue, though, is that the derivative might not necessarily be a unit vector. You can, you, can take a, you can take a derivative of a unit vector and not have it be unit. So, because of this fact, then, we're interested in making this derivative vector a unit vector. It gets a new name. It's called the, the normal vector, the unit normal vector. It is the principal unit normal vector. And so if we have a curve and we have a unit tangent vector orthogonal to it, actually pointing inside will be the unit normal vector. Okay. And these are two vectors that are magnitude one. And now we're going to have a third vector, just like i, j, and k. I is magnitude 1, J is orthogonal to it, also magnitude 1, K is orthogonal to both of those, and magnitude 1. And if you take I cross J, you'll get K. Well, if you, if you take T cross N, you'll get a new vector. The variable that we use for it is called B, and it's called the binormal vector. Okay? It turns out that it's orthogonal to both of them because it's a cross product, right? The cross product vector is orthogonal to both of the original vectors, okay? But um, also, it ends up that it's a unit vector. So if we on this on this graph here, we have our unit tangent, we have our unit normal, orthogonal to both of these guys, we have our unit binormal vector, okay? It's a unit vector, okay? Uh, the way you can figure that out is by using the formula for uh, the magnitude of a cross product. It's the product of the magnitudes times the cos uh, times the sine of the angle between them. And so, yeah, if each of these guys are both unit vectors, the product of the magnitudes is one. And then when it comes to the the sine of the angle between them, they're they're right angles, so the sine of the angle between them is a one. Okay. Um, if we had time to go further, there's a third. Uh, there's a nice calculation that goes right along with arc length and curvature it's called torsion it's a measurement of the degree of twist at a particular point imagine a roller coaster yes you're traveling along the curve so there's an arc length that you travel yes you have some bend at certain points so there's the curvature that you can measure but at the same time you're traveling along and you're going around a bend sometimes the roller coaster does a twist on you and you can measure the degree of twist. The name of it is torsion, and it's related to the binormal vector. Okay. The three of these vectors make up a nice framework, like an IJK framework. It's called the TNB frame, or popularized by the mathematician Fernet, the Fernet frame. There should be some kind of accent above that last E there in the last name. Sorry about that. But uh, yeah, and it's very, very... Um, useful if you go in to study uh, differential geometry. If you have a space curve, knowing the, uh, the T and B framework is going to be very, very helpful to you. Okay. All right, let's take it one step further. Let's look beyond that and look at planes associated with these vectors. You know, I and J, they form the framework for the, the, the XY plane. So let's take T and N. They form the framework for a plane. The name of that plane is called the oscillating plane. As you travel along the curve, it changes depending on 
you know, exactly where the unit tangent vector and the unit normal vector is, it's, uh, it's hard to see there, but it's, it's like a parallelogram um, bordered in brown, but of course it goes on in all directions. The, the unit tangent vector, I believe, is the black in this video, in this picture here, and the unit normal vector is in red. The, the plane determined by those two vectors is called the oscillating plane. And we can find the equation of it. Uh, there's another plane. There's actually, of course, three planes. These are like your coordinate planes. So think of the, the oscillating plane as your floor, your xy plane. As you travel on the curve, it's your floor. Okay. If you look at the plane that's associated with the normal vector and the binormal vector, the red and the blue in this picture, then you get a plane that's called the normal plane. Of course, it's orthogonal to the oscillating plane. Okay, and the third plane the, is, is, is very important in the measurement of, of twisting. The third plane is the plane that's associated with the binormal and the tangent vector. I don't believe there's a name with that, but, but we, I just want to introduce these names to you here. Um, and so, uh, one more concept. In the oscillating plane, there is a circle that becomes important um, related to curvature. So the circle, it lies in the oscillating plane. The center of the circle is the point that's on the curve. Okay, it'll share the tangent vector. Okay. The, something that's tangent to the circle will be tangent to the curve at that point. Um, and what happens with it is that the circle will always lie on the, on the concave side of the curve. Okay, the, the unit normal vector is going to point towards the, towards, the, uh, towards the center of the circle. Um, did I say... I think I might have said by accident that the center of the curve is... Center of the circle is on the curve. I, I misspoke. I'm sorry about that. Um, the center of the of the circle, this oscillate, it's going to be called an oscillating circle. The center of it is not on the curve. I, I misspoke. Sorry about that. Um, but its radius is related to curvature in the following way. It's very strange. The radius of the oscillating circle is the reciprocal of curvature. Okay. I think the animation is out of order here. Sorry about that. Yeah, but the radius is 1 over kappa. Okay, and it's called the oscillating circle. Um, I don't know if this animation is going to work. I hope so. Oh, great, wonderful. This is straight out of Wiki. I'm not. I'm not making this thing up myself. So this is a very famous curve. Um, I'm going to mispronounce it. I apologize. But the uh, Lisa Jouche curve um, is is a, a famous mathematical curve. If you can see the shape of it, hopefully you've seen it before. And so as you travel along this curve, in in the um, Yeah, looks like it's yeah. Okay, it's not two dimensional. This is this is deceptive. It's a three dimensional curve. But anyway, um, we have the uh, unit normal vector. We have the unit tangent vector. Um, the green is the tangent. The the the, the yellow is the uh, the normal vector. And uh, whether it's two D or three D, there's this circle that you get. And when the curvature is small, the circle has a large radius. But when the curvature is large, the circle has a small radius. As you travel along that curve, and you can go to that website there and be able to uh, see other um, drawings as well, straight out of Wikipedia, oscillating circle. And we're going to do a question, if we have time. Let's try to do it real fast. Um, a question on finding the equation of the oscillating circle. Okay, so uh, here's a 2D curve, par parametrically described as T for the X and Y equals uh, sine of that T. I'm interested in the point when... Um, x is equal to pi over 2 and y is equal to 1. So when you have a parametric curve, you can calculate curvature using the formula that was derived in the previous video. It's just taking a, um, the 2D and adding a third component to it so you can perform the cross product, the third component being 0 in the K. And so, um, yeah, if f is equal to t and, and g is equal to sine of t, we can quickly calculate this formula. Um, f prime is 1, and g prime is cosine. Uh, double prime? Yes, double prime is involved. f double prime is 0, and g double prime is negative sine. This formula in the numerator has the, the f prime times g double prime minus the f double prime times g prime. 
Okay, so that's going to be then a, um, a sine of t, but negative, but inside absolute value bars. So it's just going to be sine of t. And then underneath, if you square the uh, f prime, you get 1. If you square the g prime, you get cosine squared. And so that's the guy who's raised to the 3 halves power, the sum of those guys. We're interested specifically in um, t equals pi over 2. Why does t equal pi over 2? Well, x is equal to t. So whatever x is, then that's what um, t is. And check it out with the y, sine of pi over 2 is, is, is 1. So it works out. And then you plug this into the formula, and you end up with the numerator of a, of a 1. Denominator also is 1. So your curvature is 1. This isn't the best example. It should have been, I should have picked an example where curvature was something that can be, you know, distinguished when you take its reciprocal. Um, so like something like a 2, so the radius would be a half. Here, my curvature is 1, and my radius then is also 1. The question is asking for the equation of the circle. Well, if you know the radius and you know the center, um, if you're at the point pi over 2, 1 on, on this curve here, and you go down one unit, that puts the center on the, uh, maybe this isn't right. I'm sorry, Th this isn't right, this equation here. It should be um, on the, on the x-axis, so the, uh, what isn't right is the y. Sorry about that. Okay, here we go. The, oh gosh, can I go back? Okay, can I write? Will it let me write? Sorry, the, uh, it's not letting me write. Oh, darn. I want to be able to write. Okay, uh, the, uh, okay, here we go. The, the, it's, uh, it's just y squared. There we go. Sorry about that. There we go. So that's it. We did it. It's the end of the video. This is the end of the series. Um, next up, we actually start multivariable calculus. We look at multivariable limits and multivariable derivatives, and we try to get a handle on that. Thank you for watching. My name is Nakaya Remmer. Sorry this video went long, but um, I'm here to help you through this journey. And if you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. Uh, reach out to me. Comment down below. Uh, check out my website. Uh, like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.